Hello world, hope you're doing well. If not, as always, hope it gets better for you. So I'm here with this character here, <laughs> fellow hobbyist. He goes around, gives talks around the country and world. You've actually been to other countries mm -hmm. as well, haven't you? And you give multiple talks? I do a lot of banquet style talks. I do a lot of science oriented talks, a lot of cichlid related talks, but all every single talk that I do will be based on my personal experiences. Very cool. And what are the titles of some of your talks? Well, the main one that everybody knows me for is uh, is the is the Mad Aquarist. Uh, that's the one that most people really like, and it's basically a, a, a retrospective look of my life as a hobbyist and all the bad things I've done for my family, my house, and everything. Everything's for the fish, and that's the one that most people know me for. Uh, the one I'm going to be doing uh, this weekend, I'm going to be doing for one of the local clubs, is my evolution in cichlids. And there's a lot of science and a lot of different topics in it, but it's my personal journey through cichlids. Very cool, and Mad Aquarist. Yes, that's your channel too. So you started a YouTube channel as Correct. well. Yeah. So if you want to check that out, he's putting out content. He's actually doing a tour of this fish room and it's changed since you guys seen it. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. And the main reason I wanted to introduce him. All right, so I got to ask you a few things. Let's grab a seat. Okay. All right, boy, now I got you in the hot seat here. I'm gonna ask you all the questions. <laughs> It's like an interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, first of all, how do people find you and what all do you do? So you want me to tell them my personal address? Yes, everything. <laughs> I live rural Manitoba, Canada. I live pretty much on the tundra. It's really, really, really cold. So I know none of you are ever going to come there. But uh, if you're looking for me on YouTube, my main channel is known as The Mad Aquarist. Uh, now that channel, if you go there today, you'll see that there's all sorts of random stuff on there that may not interest you. When, uh, when I started doing YouTube, I basically focused strongly on fish and fish sciences. So there's a lot of unique topics there that you may not find on other channels. However, I also started then branching out. We have a small hobby farm. I did a lot of insects and isopods and tarantulas and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, and I started putting all that stuff on there because I had a challenge accessing certain things. Now, if you go there and you follow the Mad Aquarius, I promise you going forward, it's going to be strictly fish and fish sciences. However, if you do have an interest in nature, plants, vivarium builds, tarantulas, insects, different things like that, I have a secondary channel that we just launched. It's called the Mad Aquarist Realm Natura. And that one there is where all my random stuff, go to a reptile zoo or anything like that, it'll all be on that channel. And then we did the third channel where we branched off and made our small family farm channel. And that's called Outnumbered Acres, the Little Bigs Farm. We have only a five acre little farm and we have all sorts of uh, Scottish Highland cows and we have a rare breed of pig from New Zealand called Cooney Cooney Pigs. So a lot of random stuff for you, but there's the three channels you can find me on. Very cool. So you dabble in all kinds of things. <laughs> it's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got to ask, have you ever seen a fish room like this? No, nope, never seen anything like this. This this is truly a special treat. Like I said uh, in the video, people are going to see the video that I'm going to put out about you. You're the real deal. You actually practice exactly what you preach to everybody. You live it day in and day out. Not, not only have I never seen a fish room that is run that is completely silent like this one, it is a complete breath of fresh air. But all the fish are exceptionally in good health. The plant growth is incredible. Uh, it's, it's just You've totally embraced Mother Nature's natural concept and you have a true, clear understanding of how these systems should work. And you show it to everyone every single day on your channel. Well, I appreciate that you can see that. And how many fish rooms have you actually been into? Well, I've toured a lot of fish rooms <laughs> in a lot of countries. In a lot of, everybody has their own little niche of what yes. they like, what they specialize in, you know? Like I can be just as fascinated going into a small little garage with a guy with a real heavy, uh, strong killifish fish room, you know, lots of little jars and stuff. I find that just as fascinating as this, or when I go to somebody that keeps a big, you know, monster fish room, all sorts of big lunkers. Every passion, I'm like you, I love it all. And do you have any favorite things in this fish room? Well, I definitely would have one, you and we have talked about it. There's a certain area of fish in the world that are a very, very strong passion of me, and it's all the Dawkinsia barbs. Any of the fish that hail from the Western Ghat regions of India, there's some fish that are probably going to be some of the most threatened fish environmental-wise in the next coming years, and they definitely need our help. But those incredible Dawkinsia barbs that you have back there, the mascara barbs, they are outstanding. And the way you've got them set up for long, continuous breeding, 
exceptional. I love those things. One thing that I, it's something that you really have to see in person to be here. But like, I don't know how many tanks are around me, but there's rows and rows of tanks. Now to somebody that just looks at everything at a quick glance, they all look kind of the same. You know, they got a, a natural substrate, they all got different types of plants. Some of the plants are, they're just floating. There might be algae in the tank and they all got different types of fish. But if you really spend the time in here, every single one of the tanks is its own complete ecosystem. Even on any rack you look at, there's different plants, different fish, and they're all interacting different. When you set up tanks like this, and I don't know if Lucas talks about this on a channel, but I'm sure he does because he has such a firm grasp, but when you set up tanks like this in these natural styles, you're gonna witness true behaviors. You're not gonna witness behaviors that you would see with just normal aquarium keeping. You're gonna witness true behaviors, how fish would interact in the wild with their environments. This is such a, such a breath of fresh air for the way that you're gonna see. Your, your breeding ability for some of these species that may never have been bred, like you, you're working on just not guppies and rice fish and all sorts of, you know, all sorts of readily available stuff. You're working on stuff like African rope fish. And that is not a fish that is not, not necessarily commonly kept. It's a seldomly bred anywhere in the world. And if anybody's gonna be successful, it's gonna be you. Putting the pressure on. Well, I couldn't agree anymore and I appreciate that. And now you like the barbs. What are some of your favorite types of fish? Well, I'm very much like you. I'm, a, I'm kind of a generalist. Now, most people, especially YouTube, since I've been on YouTube, or even in the past decade or so, most people associate me with knowing about cichlids. And yes, I'm a member of the American Cichlid Association. I've been almost a lifetime member. Uh, and I absolutely love cichlids dearly because that was the focus of most of my scholarly work and working with little bone structures within cichlids. But I love all fish. My passion though is breeding fish. And I like to breed a fish and move on to the next fish. One of the talks that I've been developing is called the puzzle. And I view fish as a puzzle. And our goal, like what you do, is you set up these beautiful natural environments and you try to get the species to re replicate as naturally as possible. I view it the same way, but my thing is I figure out the pieces to figure out the pieces, how the pieces go together to make that puzzle work. And if the puzzle works, the fish reproduces successfully in captivity. And then generally, I move on to the next. But I absolutely love barbs. I love a lot of the printed barbs. I find them fascinating for behavior. They're incredibly colorful, some of the species, but it's mainly the behavior of how they reproduce and how they associate with each other in the aquarium. I love cichlids, primarily New World cichlids, but I did do 13 years solid of Lake Tanganyikan cichlids, but we're talking back in the early 70s, going into the 80s before they were really big. I absolutely love, probably absolute favorites of mine would also be killifish, which most people wouldn't associate with me, but when it comes to killies, primarily my interests are all the dirt killies. The species that generally spawn in, in the bottom layers, not the plant spawners. So your fungula panchex, your cynolebius, astrolebius, all those Simpsonix, these types. And really my favorites would probably be the Nothobranchius out of Africa. I find the, the, the breeding of them absolutely fascinating. But I've bred a lot of plecos, I've bred a lot of coris, I've bred a lot of rainbows, a lot of wild type live bears. So lots Guppies. and lots of fish just like you. And do you have any advice for us fish keepers? Well, the only advice I'd have, that's just my opinion, would be keep what you want because you like it. You get enjoyment from it. Doesn't matter if it's a cichlid aquarium, guppy aquarium, hell, even if it's a nice, beautiful SpongeBob tank. Keep what you like because that's what you like. Don't follow trends, do what you want and do the best that you can for those fish because those fish are depending on you to give them the best that you can. There you have it, that's Chris Biggs. Thank you for joining. Oh, anytime my friend, it was an absolute blast. Yes, I've had <laughs> a lot of fun. And check out his channel, he'll have a fish room tour video and plus all kinds of other stuff he does. Actually, he's got three channels as he mentioned there. So <laughs> lots of content if you guys like those sort of things. And until next time everybody, peace, have a great one. Cheers.